So in case you're new here, what I'm making is a metal melting furnace. The burner is going to be this. <laughs> and I want to melt these. <laughs> Pretty sure they're aluminum. If they're magnesium, we might be in for uh, an interesting time. So Perry from over at SW Dweeb sent me a message asking how I think a kale wool and satanite foundry would hold up. And so I thought, what better way to respond than to make a video? And it really inspired me to kind of get off my butt and finish this project. So that was a good thing. So what's left to do? Not much, actually. I just have to finish putting satanite on the lid. If you remember a long time back, I put satanite on the kaol on the bottom drum. Let's take a look at it. So it's had plenty of time to dry, of course. It has been heated up a little bit, certainly not to furnace temperatures, a couple hundred degrees anyway. So first the question, is this durable? No, <laughs> absolutely not. You can see here, yeah, it's very soft under under the satanite, and the satanite kind of kind of crumbles like a cookie topping on some kind of marshmallow cookie covered treat thing or something. So I suppose the question would be then, why even use the satanite? Well, kale wool is made of ceramic fibers, and it's my understanding that when you heat them up too much, it changes form into a kind of a nasty stuff that then can really easily get in the air when you're using your furnace and it's just not a good idea to use a furnace without a covering over the kale wool. So you're kind of left with this surface that you just have to kind of maintain and it seems to be kind of almost a, look at me talking like I have any experience at all, I haven't even fired this thing up before. <laughs> but from my research and from reading a lot of posts and just kind of working with the stuff, it's pretty clear that it's it's pretty much a consumable. It's something that you're gonna have to be replacing on the furnace from time to time. You're gonna bump into it and it's gonna flake off or it's going to, I don't know if it melts away or burns away so much, I guess I'll find out, but. So then another good question would be, well, what about the lid? Because this is going to have pressure on it just from its own weight. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be an issue. So what I did, was two things. I put this mesh over the kale wool, hold it back because I, I think gravity would just kind of pull it away. Also kind of just to give some structure to the satanite. Uh oh, can you see my address? Yeah, so almost like rebar or reinforcing mesh. At least that's, that's my thinking. And also what I did was around the edges I soaked in some sodium silicate, water glass. This stuff hardens up when it cures with, uh, I think, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It kind of dries and then, and then kind of cures, from my understanding. It's given some rigidity. It's, you can see it's still, oh, oh yeah, it's a little bit crumbly. The idea was that it would give it a little bit more stiffness where this lid rests on the bottom. Working with this stuff, it's a good idea to have a mask. I've got a uh, old salad container here. That should be good for mixing this stuff up. From what I remember last time, it doesn't really help to have any tools or anything. Uh, I ended up just using my hands. Wow, this is, uh, this is not great packaging. I think I'm going to have to put this in a bucket. I'm not going to measure. From what I remember, you want like a sour cream-like consistency. You know, honestly, at this point, ow! I wish you could have seen that. Mack my self in the face with this thing. Uh, honestly, I don't think I need the dust mask anymore because uh, it's not dusty anymore. All right, so. This is the consistency I've got now. I don't know if that tells you much, but it's um, it's heavy. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh boy. What did I do last time? Did I wet the, the wool? Maybe I wet the kale wool. Uh, Like, uh, yeah, this, how did I do this last time? <laughs> Perry's going to be watching this saying, no way, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do this. This looks like a lot of work. That's what we have to do here, I guess. We just have to, oh, man. <sighs> oh, that's a lot. <laughs> well. So I'm putting, a, I'm putting quite a bit of water into the wool here. Last time I used a spray bottle. That would have been the better idea because it's hard to control how much you're... Hard to control how much you're putting in with just pouring it on. I think also the way to do this is in several layers. I think that's really your best bet. This is one of those things where once you get it close enough, just leave it alone. Stop touching it. <laughs> because then you end up just like pulling a bunch more off and then you, yeah. All right, I think that's good enough for that part. Now we get, I can flip it over and it should go a lot easier. Oh yeah, that's nice. Totally underestimated how much of this stuff I was going to need. <laughs> that was just not even nearly enough. All right, got some more powder. Got the mask back on. Although I'm not really seeing a lot of this stuff in the air. Let's see if I can take the mask off without hitting myself again. Oh, all right. Pretty good, I guess. All right. Blah. So I first want to work it a little bit underneath the mesh here, but I don't want, I want to try and keep the mesh from being exposed. Like any of this metal. What the hell is that? Is that a raisin? I think any kind of exposed metal is probably going to um, oxidize pretty quickly. Uh, so if you have, uh, Thicker gloves, that might be a good idea too. Just have these nitrile gloves and they're just a little bit thin for this. Man, is this not enough either? So as I'm mixing up this batch, I accidentally poured in too much water, or what I thought was too much water. But it occurred to me that maybe this is more the consistency it should be. It almost feels lighter in my hand Oh, my, my gloves just falling apart here. Oh, well, so much for the glove. Oh. This edge has a lot of um, exposed corners of the wire mesh that I use to... It's all bent over, but they're not all... Some are sticking out. Man, I keep underestimating how much of this I actually need. So that brings me to another point. The reason I'm building the furnace this way is for expense, because wool is cheap, so I thought it'd be cheap to make a foundry this way. But Satanite isn't that cheap. Uh, it's actually pretty expensive, especially considering this is kind of something you're going to have to replace over the course of the furnace. Alright, I think that's about as much as I'm going to do this morning. I'm back out to getting out here in the garage at like, well, what's today? I got out here today at 6, which is just pretty good, before work, so. I think that's what I'm going to have to do to finish up some of these projects. Just get out here early and do a little bit at a time. All right, oh, my hand's freezing. It's cold out here. It's April. It should be warm. All right, some good progress. So in case you're new here, what I'm making is, no, that's not. My idea for this furnace was more of a scrap processing furnace. Like I could melt car wheels and large bulky stuff that it would be harder for me to do in a smaller furnace. 
I don't have a lot of big projects that I need a giant crucible full of molten aluminum, but, but I could. Stay tuned for firing that up because that's going to be a future video pretty soon. And uh, I think I'm just going to toss a wheel in there and just see if it melts, honestly. I don't know yet how I'm going to make the ingots, but I think maybe I'm just going to flow the molten metal out the bottom and into like a piece of angle iron or something. Haven't figured that part out yet. I don't know what to do with that much metal. I, I'm not going to use a crucible, obviously, but I do have a hole in the bottom of the furnace that I, I think it's going to flow out of. That's my crazy plan anyway, so if you're new here, click subscribe down there and click the bell next to it so that you can get notified when those future videos come out and you can see uh, fire and molten metal, hopefully. Oh, and SW Dweeb is the channel. Go check it out. Uh, Perry is a foundryman, foundryman. See, at some point I'm gonna have to learn all this terminology. I, I know the word crucible, but I, in furnace. So if you're interested in casting, definitely head over there and give him a subscribe and check out his videos. If I didn't answer your questions, let me know in the comments down there and we'll either have a little discussion in the comments or I'll try and follow up with a future video. I don't I really know what I'm doing, so I don't know how much help it's gonna be, but uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.